gonna click, I'll be waiting for your alert. Let's go, okay, okay. Happy Wisdom Wednesday, guys. Today we have another wonderful Wisdom Wednesday. So, as a career coach, my goal is to share wonderful, brilliant stories of people who are doing their thing as corporatepreneurs, entrepreneurs, and people who have still yet to make that transition into entrepreneurship. So we're going to get into a fabulous story today. Someone who's doing some cool things in the world, and I'm really curious to ask her some questions. She's in the room, and then we're also going to do something really cool. We're going live on Facebook. If y'all are on Facebook, if y'all like Facebook a little bit more, we're going to do that too. So just a moment. We're going to go ahead and go live. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. So we are now live. Oh, look at How are you? So let me just tell you. Oh, this is perfect. All right. Now we just have, let's see, we'll go live on, are we live already on Facebook? I think so. I'm not sure. You know what? This is what I'm going to do. Da, da, da. Thank you guys so much for being with us. We have a really special guest today, and I get a chance to ask her a bunch of questions about all the great and wonderful things that she is doing in her space. So, um, as I check as I check Facebook, I would love for you to inter introduce yourself to the people on Instagram so that we can know who's in the room. Absolutely. So, hello, my Instagram followers and my gems. I'm Jewel Robinson at JR Finance. You know me as the host of Financial Gems with Jewel. We can see on Roku TV on Visual Dramatics. I'm also got another network called PSTV Positive out in San Diego, and you can watch me on YouTube as well. So, so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to have you. So listen, you've already created your community. You have your gems. And then when, the thing about it is, guys, let me fill you in on how Jewel and I met. This is the power of like networking and then just putting yourself out there because if it hadn't been for Jewel reaching out to me, then I would never have known all the great and wonderful things that she's doing and all the things that I should be doing to get my game up, okay? As a <laughs> podcaster. So two things, um, you're a podcaster. Um, and not only are you a podcaster, you're on Roku. You're on Roku. Yeah. So those of you guys who have Roku TVs, I know you didn't even know you could have a podcast on Roku. You can go on Roku and check out your podcast name once, once again. Financial Gems with Jewel. Financial Gems with Jewel. So you guys can go ahead and check that out. And then the second thing is you're building a community. Like that is the coolest thing ever. How is it, how is it running your community? It's so, 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 like, everything is so new to me, just building a community. So on Roku, it's actually a show. You could have podcasts, but I have an actual show that I pre-record so I can do all my post-production and everything. And it's just one of those things, you know, it's like watching TV until you get the numbers, like, for my exec. I don't know who's watching, so you just always have to do your best. You always have to just bring your A game. And then when you finally get the sheet, um, the last time I spoke with him, I was at over... 300,000 viewers and it was just amazing because I don't know who they are. You can't really see them the same way you can on IG or on Facebook, but they're out there. Right. They're out there. <laughs> you know, for those of you guys who are on Instagram, you know that you can always put uh, questions or comments yeah. here in the bottom of the Instagram. And for those of you guys who are on Facebook, we can't see you until you comment on the, in the chat. So engage with us. Let us know what you're thinking. Join the podcast, both um, the the, the um, Financial Jewels podcast and, hey, the Work and Play podcast, because that is also another cool one. Listen, when, when Jewel and I connected, I was like, oh, I was taking notes the entire conversation because I'm like, wait a minute. I need to do all these things. I need to do all these things. I need to get connected. So... Jewel, when it comes to Wisdom Wednesday, well, one, of, one, first of all, thank you so much for joining us for Wisdom Wednesdays. As a career coach, my goal is to really share as many stories as I can so that people know that the proof is in the pudding. People are making their self, their selves ready to go into the entrepreneurial journey, and they're doing it in different ways. There are so many things to consider. 
finances is the number one, right? So as I um, introduce yourself, or as I introduce you, I want to just let you guys know that this is someone, it's a wealth of knowledge from one, experiencing and trying different things, putting herself out there, but also you're still in your nine to five, right? I didn't catch the last part. I'm still... In your nine to five? Oh, this is coming. Yes, yes, yes. I'm still in the Marine Corps and I'm still working on that side of it. So making that transition, hopefully within the next two months to go back full 100% being able to do that because I miss it, being able to do it 100%. So yes, absolutely. My uh, ring light is acting weird. So for uh, Wisdom Wednesday, I, I think every entrepreneur should have a mission and a purpose in their business before they get started. So in your entrepreneurial journey, what is your mission and what is it that you set out to do here? Oh, absolutely. So my mission, so many, many years ago when I got into the financial ar arena, I started a platform which was creating healthy financial habits because I've always felt that our financial habits come from a place, whether we were young, from our parents, from those that are most influential around us. And sitting down with my clients and learning about them, you get to learn all of their financial habits. Whether you came from a family that were penny pinchers, whether you came from a family that were spenders, whether you came from a family that was just, hey, you only live once, YOLO, you only live once. And I'm like, oh, oh okay, so like just, just do what you need to do today. And so with that, it always allowed me to learn my clients better because the more I learn them, the more I'm able to understand them and understand those habits. So that's been my platform and it's developed over time. And so with the show, bringing those stories to the forefront in a fun, inspirational and educational way, because I always say I can sit here and talk about finances and products, but that gets boring. You don't want to hear me talk about life insurance every single episode. Like that's, we're going to fall asleep on that. <laughs> so I just, being able to hear other people's entrepreneur stories or just their stories on life, bridging that financial gap in there and then providing those financial tips is what I do is what I love. So absolutely. That's it. Thank you so much, Jewel. So one of the things, so we're here in this, um, in this part of our journey, we're in our transition, right? And so yeah. a lot of times when we have our full-time job, we look at money one way and then we go into entrepreneurship. We need to develop a whole new relationship with our money, right? There are, yeah. I learned four different, um, you mentioned saver, um, I think I learned about Saver, um, Spender. Uh, there was like two different personalities and none of them really like were like the ones that's conducive to entrepreneurship. So as you work with people in their financial capacity, what are some of the things that people miss in their transition when they're making any type of transition, but specifically right. going into like working for themselves? Yeah, definitely. I would say a lot of the key things that people miss are creating a plan. You'll be surprised everyone gets out there and they're like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. I'm going to open up a store. I'm going to do this. And they have it up here, but actually putting it down on a pen and paper, creating a, a plan. Step number one, step number two, so that, I mean, I've met people who have a full um shop or they have it but that's it they don't know where to go from there they forgot about marketing they forgot about a budget to do this they're like well what social media platform do I want to be on I don't know maybe before that they want on social media so all of these steps when you write it down it helps you stay focused I am a focus driven person so those are some of the steps that I see that a lot of people miss mainly how to market and those next steps, you know, after you get your tax ID, after you get, those are easy. Getting your name, we all know our name. We all know who we want to be, the tax ID. And then it's like, then what? Because <laughs> do you want to market just local in your state? Because there's a lot of people that are just like, I just, I don't want to go too big because I don't know how to do that. Are you staying within your house or your dreams to eventually have an office space to go nationwide, to go worldwide? What are those steps? Because it comes at you. I've met a lot of entrepreneurs that weren't expecting such an increase in such a short amount of time. So when they get it, they're like, oh, I'm overwhelmed. I wasn't ready to, you know, take the cookies to the next step. And I'm like, well, girl, you got, you know, orders and orders and orders coming in. And now it's just you. You cannot bake 10 cakes in one night. 
Now you need to hire some people and they didn't think about the budget. They, they weren't thinking about what it may cost to get an assistant to answer all the phone calls to get people off of the internet and then get workers. And I'm like, so what, what are you gonna do? And they, I've seen people shut down because of it. And that just kind of broke my heart because I'm like, no, this is what people live for. This is what they dream for and you're there. But it got so stressful and overwhelming that at least I know why by a few, I mean more than three that I've met entrepreneurs that just said it's just too much. It got to be too much and they shut it down. Other people, you know, they lose a lot of customers during that process because they're missing. You know, you start getting it's it's okay when you're getting, you know, five people, but when you're getting 20 people on social media, 20 emails and 20 here, 60 in one day, and you start missing people and then people start saying, okay, maybe their customer service isn't the best. You know, I put in my order last week and I don't know, did you get it? Did you respond? So I would say those are a lot of the keys to any entrepreneur when you're starting and how to, to scale up and keep the momentum going. Mm, that's that's holistic advice. That's not just like, it's not just focused on finances. Let me tell you yeah. guys, because when we're talking about this financial wealth as a business owner, everything is all encompassed. Your, your wisdom right now, that is all encompassing because one, we discredit planning so much. Yes. Um, especially when we're thinking about going into entrepreneurship, a lot of us just want to jump. Like forget the planning um, and hey, more power to the people who just want to jump and then, you know, just um, trust faith. I, I get it. But then if you plan ahead, then you can really account for some of those hurdles ahead of time that you won't have to deal with when you're in it. So thinking about how big you want to scale your business instead of just kind of jumping in and figuring things out. Thank you. That was really good. Thank you so much for that. You're welcome. Now, you talked about your impact with, with entrepreneurs and people that you've worked with and given advice. And I'm curious about your personal journey. Yeah. Like you've got the podcast, you're 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 in the financial space. And let me not I'm not remiss that to mention that you're in the Marines right now. So yes. can you tell us a little <laughs> bit about your career journey? Yes, a career journey. You know, everyone's like, well, how did you get started? It was literally by I always say nothing is by accident. Obviously, this is where God wanted me to be. I just didn't know this was the path. But I can tell you that this was not where I was going to where I thought I wanted to be. But I, you know, I went to college from UGA and in the middle of UGA, I joined the Marine Corps. And that's just what I did. I was like, you know, I'm getting tired of the college, the college thing really need other, you know, options, other revenues of income. So I joined the Marine Corps. I was like, oh, I need a little spice in my life. And the Marine Corps gave me spice. I was like, hey, be careful what you ask for. And just like with any job, you know, you have your highs, your lows, you have a love-hate relationship the longer you're in there. And I was on one of those love, eh, let's see what else is out there type of moments stationed in San Diego at the time. And I put my resume out there. I didn't know. It was kind of just open. And I just wanted to kind of capture what was out there. Oh, for, the, for the record, gems, I do not have a financial background. That's not what I went to school for. And it's not what I do in the military. So when I got um, the interview with one of the top insurance companies in San Diego, I was like, oh, this is cool. This is awesome. Girl, I was so naive. I didn't know what I was going to get myself into. I was just happy. Someone called. I had an interview. Girl, four-part interview. But I learned how to build my business. And I, I did really great at it. I did good. So I went on to work for three other insurance companies, and then I decided to open my own. I've won awards all the rookie seasons for all of these companies, been part of management and mentorship. So I opened my own business 2016, Digital Robinson Insurance and Financial Services, and as an independent broker, and it's just been loving being able to do that, bringing my platform to people, been able to travel with it, meet people like you, and share that. So that's how all of that happened. I'm a huge proponent to tell people, um, allow yourself to evolve because where you maybe see yourself may not be the path where you, that is best for you to go on. So this is it. I love finances. I love it. I could talk about it all day long, all uh, aspects of it. So I'm, I'm definitely where I need to be. You know, we got to get into that. So you, you, you did, you said, I, you said, okay, Jim, I didn't have a finance background. 
what was your mind thinking at the time when you were like, okay, so I don't have the skill set, but I'm going to get, I'm getting into, into this field. And then how did you become successful? Did you deal with like any, like, how was the, even the learning curve getting into that space? It's hard. I just, I'm a type of person, once I make my mind that I want to do something, I want to be great at it. So I said, you know, I, I don't have a skill set for it. I don't, no one in my family is in the financial field. So I had to learn everything from day one. So when I tell people, hey, you know, study material, I was there. I had to learn. Everything was new to me, absorbing, asking questions, getting frustrated, taking my state exam. And I didn't pass it on the first time. I missed it by like two points. And I was just like, well, okay. They're like, Take it again. And, you know, I was like, okay, I'm proving myself. It's two points. So basically, I missed like one question or a half a question. I don't know what, but took it the next time and I passed. And I was like, okay, now I'm ready to go. And then the next step learning product, learning the art of the sale, learning people, communication skill, presenting skills, all of the things that go into your actual client relationship. And let me tell you guys, because I'm just, I, people, Look at me now, they would never, never guess this, but I was just like a lot of them. I was in San Diego. I'm not from San Diego. I'm from Georgia. That's where all my friends and family were. When you do a lot of these entrepreneur businesses, they want, it's best to start where your nucleus is. My nucleus was on the other side of town. Well, not town, other side of the state. <laughs> right, in another time zone, so... I didn't have that. And I had just moved to San Diego. Literally, I can count them on one hand. I had about five friends. That was it. And um, so everyone, I wasn't favorite to excel. I actually thought I would bomb out because they're like, she doesn't have a network here. I didn't know anyone. Coming from the military side of the house is a completely different network than it is on the civilian side. And I do what I tell people. I wrote down my plan. I said, I'm gonna be at work doing my studying being in all our groups, learning product. And every day I found a network after dark business meeting to go to. So I work till five or six, the network after dark starts somewhere between six and seven. I stay there till about nine, sometimes 10 talking to people. I didn't have business cards yet. Cause I'm broke. I'm just like y'all, I'm broke. So <laughs> I'm just talking to people, putting people in my cell phone. I did that every day. On weekends, I found vendor event. I was like, I got to get out there. So I did churches. I did fashion shows. I did community events, volunteer events. You see the little people that put up their table? That was me. And I was like, if they look at me, if they look at me, I'm going to say hi. I'm getting them in. I'm getting them in. So that's, I was that girl. I was her. Where you're like, I hope she doesn't see me. And I'm like, I see you. I see you. You're going to talk to me. But that's literally how I built my business. I would say for the first four months, nonstop. That was my weekend. So when I tell people I gave up, it wasn't even a half a day on Saturday. Those events for, you know, people who done vendor events, you get there at 8 a.m. or maybe sometimes two hours before the event starts to set up before doors open and then you're there at least an hour afterwards so i'm there at like eight at least eight to six every saturday every saturday i was just there beating it down and during the week but i got to meet a lot of san diego's business owners and entrepreneurs because i was everywhere they're like i didn't know you were at this event and i'm like here i am i didn't know you know such and such i do <laughs> and i just and then finally the ball just kept moving and my numbers were growing and people were like, oh, maybe she's going to stay. Maybe she's kind of good. And if I could tell anyone anything, be authentic. Because believe it or not, I didn't have an afro back then. I just had my regular hair. I was a dime a dozen. I looked like everybody. So I was like, how are they going to remember me? So I wore these beautiful heels. I love colorful heels. So everyone would be like, she's a shoe girl. And at first I was like, I have a name. I have a name, but they was like, mm -mm. my girlfriend, she was like, oh, I was talking to my other girlfriend. And she was like, you know, the insurance lady. They're like, who? They're like, the shoe girl. girl. And I was like, I'm, I'm shoe girl. She was like, yeah, you're a shoe girl. Now, if it gets clients. So be aware of how other people are 
experiencing you because I didn't have this purple t-shirt here. Like this has evolved. This used to be white and red and all kinds of colors, gray. And I finally got this. So now I would say people know me from the purple shirt and probably the Afro, the two probably main things of how people know me, but Girl, it was a journey. All the struggles that anybody else could go through, I went through. I went through the nose. I went through the, I already have someone that does that. Oh, you're new. You're probably not going to be here. Why do I want to work with you? And you're not even from here. Are you even going to live here in the next, you know, year or so? I went through all of that. So, and I just, you know, they teach you to not hear the word no. A no is either one a yes around the corner or two, I think maybe I didn't say anything or they're not understanding what I said. Let me just hurry up and figure out how I can navigate there. And if sometimes if the door shut, you got to learn to just keep moving. Don't look at that door. Just keep on going. There's another door down that way. Someone else can't wait to meet me. Don't even know I exist yet. Let me go, you know, bring my goodness to them. So girl, yes, it was a lot. Listen, say that. You literally <laughs> giving us a lot in that one little bit. So you've been on a journey. You've put in your legwork. You've built a business without a network. And so many yeah. people will say a network is the number one thing that you need in order to start your business. But you started your business with no network and you built a network. And you just gave us the blueprint on how to build a network. So no one, yeah. no one on this call has an excuse for trying to figure out how to establish a network because you literally established it from the ground up. So thank you yeah. for that. Now, when I think about um, the journey, one, you're get, trying to get your first client. I'm sure you had a, a bunch of no's, right? But you were doing all of this still with like the employee mindset. So I'm curious mm -hmm. how to, and, and it may, maybe it had something to do with the classes that you were taking to like develop as an entrepreneur. But like, what was the mindset shift to go from only only like a um you know employee or a um not not a soldier well marine right um not how did you transition from like only one mindset to like now i'm a dual i'm like both like how do you do that how did you make that transition quit <laughs> quick because the classes were given by the insurance company that I was in so um so I was there like eight eight to five just in their type of classes and they always said you know this needs to be a full-time job you can't be a part-time entrepreneur I'm doing it now and it's very hard and you'll you can't be 50% here and 50% there you're not giving 100% to what it is you really want to do so from day one that's all I did, I was um, in insurance, I call them financial representatives. I, that's all I did. And I had a little bit of money saved up so that when I wasn't getting a paycheck, because you won't, <laughs> you're just investing, I was still, could still pay my bills. But the mindset for me doing the shift and that transition, it's I probably for me because that's how I started out. But even like now, because I've been going back and forth, it is hard because it's scary. You get a nine to five, you get a paycheck, whether you work here or there, you're going to get something. No one, you know, is going to just say, well, if you did, how, how can I say this? Your value is not determined by what clients you have. You work eight hours, you're going to get eight hours, whether or not you spent six hours on your emails and you took a longer lunch or whatever, you're still going to get that eight hours worth. Whereas an entrepreneur, if you decided to zone out, you was at Starbucks too much, you was on the phone too long and you forgot to get to your clients, yes. that's your money. Yeah. So it helps you put in, into um, perspective very, very quick. And I'm a planner, so I'm like, well, what do I need to do to pay my bills? How many people I need to talk to? And I can't go broke. I can't. That's just me. My, my boyfriend will always say that. I'm always like, I can't go broke. He was like, you're not broke. I said, I know, but I can't. I don't <laughs> want to go broke. So that's how it was for me. I think for a lot of people, in order to do that transition, you have to have a huge why. Why are you doing this? Because it needs to be your passion. It, it needs to be like a purpose or something that you're so strongly connected to that it's it's the reason why you want to get up. It's the reason why you want to share, you know, your experiences and meet new customers and clients. So definitely being connected to that. 
Yes, being connected to your purpose. That's, if, if you guys don't get anything else from today, be connected to your purpose before you do anything, even before you plan, because your plan ultimately leads up to that purpose. So when I hear you say that, one, you quit because you knew you had to quit to submerge yourself into your business. And then we hear that you are currently, you're currently um, employed and running your business, which you, I hear you saying, like, hey, don't, this is not, this is not what you want. A part-time entrepreneurship is not what you want. So is that what you mean when you say like you wanted some you wanted to spice up your life a little bit and so you got the spice? What did you mean by that? When you said, I got the spice from the Marine Corps, you know, because you know recruiters don't tell you everything. They're just like, oh, you'll be just fine. Just go ahead and join. And I was like, oh yeah, I get to go, you know, shoot weapons and throw grenades, which is true. I've done that, but the extra spice was just like, oh, just like. A lot of other organizations, good days, bad days, up days, down days, you know, over here. And you get all of that, and it's just like uh, kind of that spice, you know. Sometimes I always feel like it's like putting too much pepper in, and then it's just like, okay, well, do you counter that with more sauce, or do you just do it with the pepper? I've done both. Right? Sometimes I put more spice on there. I was like, I can take, girl, yeah, stir it up. I'm going to stir it up, y'all. Oh, oh I, I can do pepper. Okay. So... <laughs> Just to reset the room, we are talking to Miss Jewel Robinson. She is in the financial services industry, and she is a corporatepreneur right now. So we're in the middle of her journey right now, and all of the wisdom that she's gotten from going to UGA, go dogs, by the way, um, to the Marine Corps, to the financial insurance and financial services, and now we're in this in this space where you got the spice, you built up the tenacity, and got the nose. Right. You now know how to get your first and second and 50th client. And so I have so many more questions, but um, we also have folks who have we have three questions in the in the question box. So I would love to get to those. And I'm going to hold my question because I know we got some people who want some gems. Um, let's see now. And you guys can definitely add more questions. I'm going to go with the first one. Oh, wait a minute. That does not look like a question. OK, here's a question. How did you get interested into the field of finance? That's a good one. And and how does it define your purpose? Yeah, I like I said, I was literally thrown into it. I put my resume out there. So I wasn't necessarily looking for a career in the finance, but when I found it and I started learning more about it, I created my purpose with that. Like, how can I better benefit myself and others through that? And after I was done learning um, the new experiences, the products and the selling, then I went on to create my platform, which is creating healthy financial habits. So that was just my my way of putting my own little stamp on the insurance industry. But that's just literally how I started with that. And it's just grown into something I love, you know, learning your financial habits, learning. I've done a series on financial relationships, where you should be in your relationship concerning to your finances. Love, 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 love that. And it's just kind of building my YouTube channel. For those of you who've been watching me since last year, before that on the radio, on Facebook. So just kind of building with that all the way up to where I am now on Roku. So it's been a journey. So I get it, you guys. Like, this is a journey. It started in 2013. So... For those of you who are like, it's not happening quick, and I'm one of those people too, I look back and I'm like, well, you've been doing it and following the steps and doing those. You may have some setbacks, because you will, and I have, but just keep doing it, especially if it's something you enjoy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of us, I know I'm, I'm curious to know, so a lot of us, I even get this question. So did I quit too soon? Um, do I want to go back to my nine to five? Should I go back to my nine to five? How long should I wait before I quit my next nine to five? And so in, in all of those different questions, the question for you is like, what made you go back? And then what is your strategic plan to leverage your current nine to five to your, your vision? Like, where do you stand with that? Yeah, so I went back. So in the military, in the Marine Corps, I do mortuary affairs. So I work in the morgue. So what brought me to Delaware, I'm in Delaware now. It's the only um, joint mortuary military facility in the United States. So all of our deceased service members come through here. And I had an opportunity, that's just how my life works. Um, a girlfriend was leaving the position and she was like, you should put in for it. I was like, no, <laughs> cause that's always my person. I was like, no, I'm good. And she was like, you, but it'll, 
that they could use you. And, you know, I think I know you enjoy doing it. So that's literally how I got back into my nine to five, kind of doing what I do on the military side of the house. But I miss my entrepreneur spirit because it's a nine to five. I miss being able to book and see different people during the day. So my exit strategy is coming soon because I always, I always say you get that fire in you and after a while you're like, I need to go back, I miss it. And that's how it's been for me. So for me, just saving up just for a little bit because I know even though I'm not starting from scratch and a lot of, a lot of you may not start from scratch, you are in a sense starting at 100. I always say that 100, not 50 because right now it's 50, but now you're cutting off one and all that's left is 100. Looking at it like that, like, okay, Jewel, what is my plan? I'm a planner. What is my day one going to look like? So right now building up my, my partnerships and my clients. Yes, you had a question. <laughs> no, no, that's awesome. oh. <laughs> yes. You yes. You are going in. Yes, so yeah, I that's what I do for myself, you know building up my clients, you know, what is my day one going to look like? So that way, when you don't leave a job on Friday or Monday, you don't have nothing to do. That's not what we want to do. On Monday, I want to be seeing clients. I don't care if it's just one. Make sure you get out there and you do that. Another thing that I learned is a huge, 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 huge tip for me is always be doing something in your business. So let's just say you have a client, they cancel, it has nothing to do with you, family emergency, for that hour or two hour gap, you need to be doing something in your business. So whether it's finding another client, client, maybe do Facebook Live, maybe do something so that you're still filling that space and that fire with something in your business, because it's going to happen. I'm telling you, I've been there, done that all. I had um, a quick story. I was going to do a, um event in San Diego, and I don't know if it was the weather. I was even going to give away a TV. I was like, for sure, people are going to come and get a free TV. I have brought snacks and everything, and I think maybe another huge event was going on in San Diego. So huge event. I'm going to learn about financial habits, and nobody came. Like, when I say nobody, I was like, nobody wanted a free TV. I'll just take it back. And, you know, I got a little down, and then I was like, no, I reserve this space for like an hour and a half. I said, what am I going to do with the hour and a half? I can either go home and pout, but that doesn't serve my business. So I said, you know, I'm going to go Facebook Live. And I did, you can see it on way back in the day. I did a Facebook Live and I did exactly what I was going to do if people were there. I did the exact same type of lecture. So do that. I was like, hey, this is Jewel here to give you the class. I did my class. I, you know, did all oh, everything that I that I would have done with them and it made me feel good. And then now, instead of let's just say if I would have had a room for a seven, now I went Facebook Live and I had, you know, hundreds of people who were like, oh, where are you at? Questions there. So being able to be creative and let me tell you, because it hurt. <laughs> it hurt not to have people show up. But do something else. Go live. Go go do something in your business. So I love that's how that I keep it going. Life. Absolutely. I love that advice. So I, I usually say, um, you know, I just, I just differentiate the difference between like revenue generating experience, um, activity and the non -gen revenue generating ac activity. Yes. And so w what you're telling us is like, okay, even if you're, you're still in your nine to five, if you have a business and something falls through, you let that energy be revenue generating or not. It doesn't matter. As long as you're putting that energy into your business, you don't get into the cycle of just going back to your nine to five. Well, I have this free time. Let me just kind of either, you know, waste the time or go back into my nine to five, right? You're still focused on the main purpose. And I really love that feedback. I love it. So I'm going to ask another question from the group. And then I have another question for you. Do, 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 do. Okay. Creatives, oh, this goes back to when you were talking about planning. So this this question comes, it says, it says, uh, it's from Hooks Master Jazz. I think, is she a gym? Yeah, he's one of my gyms. Hey, Jazz. Hook Master Jazz, shout out to you, San Diego. He says, creatives um, have a hard time planning. It says, what would you advise to someone who isn't as structured with things, but wants to get into business? Yeah, that's a good one because it's weird because I know I'm a planner. I feel like I was, I've been a planner since a baby. Like I just, I just was always planning, you know, with my mom and I'm like, mom, you got to take me to, 
to my Girl Scout meeting. And I was like, before that, am I going to eat? Am I going to have snacks? What happens if I get hungry? I was that child. I think I was always, you know, I don't want to be hungry. I need to be able to use the restroom. And what happens if I don't want to be here no more? Are you going to be able to pick me up? And she's just like, Jewel, just go. And I'm like, you didn't answer my question. So I'm going to make sure I have a little piece of candy in my pocket. Like that was me. But I get it. Not everyone is like me. So for those of you, probably the majority of the public who are not planners, start small. I say start with baby steps because maybe what I do will probably overwhelm the vast majority of people. But start small. Say, just ask yourself, what do I want to do today? What do I want to do today? And what you come up with, that's your plan. You might just say, hey, you know what? I just want to I just want to meet one person. OK, how are you planning on meeting them? Oh, you know, Facebook. I always meet people on Facebook or if you're big on IG, you know, I'm going to go and check my chats and go back to people who were interested in you. Great. And then from there, say, OK, do I want to meet another person or how do I want to generate that? Like start somewhere, but definitely start with the things that you already have. It's very difficult to create stuff you don't have. Like I said, I. I didn't create anything else when I did that class. It was a class I was going to give. I didn't have to come up with anything. So be kind of doing, take the tools you already have and just, just go out there. So if you're, let's just say if you want to open up, I love cookies. I don't need cookies, but <laughs> if you want to open up a cookie store, you know, maybe test it out on, if you're at a nine, test it on your cold works to say, Hey, I made, you know, peanut butter cookies. Tell me what you guys think. Oh, not enough peanut butter or just right. Oh, okay, right. Write that recipe down. Okay, this is the one they like. They hated the other one. Test it out on people. Because I would test out my finances on, you know, my knowledge on people on the way going home. I'd call my favorite uncle. i call my mom and i say, hey, I, I just learned something. Let me repeat it back to you and tell me if you actually understand it. Like, if you got a phone call from me in the beginning, you're like, Jules, is this about work? I'm like, just five minutes. Just let me get it out in five minutes and then we can talk about anything else. But I would get them into it. Like, oh no, that's good. Hey, I wouldn't say that because that was like too much, you know, um, industry jargon. But say this. And I'm like, oh, okay, let me say it again. Practice. Sometimes just practice doing what it is that you do on a normal basis would help, especially if you're not ready to just jump. I'm a jumper. I'm like a jumper with a plan, shall I say. So Practice always. Um, I just want to say this too. Have your 30 second elevator pitch ready. So when you're out and someone says, Oh, girl, I love your hair. Where do you get your hair done? You know how to segue from that to, Oh, by the way, I do this 30 seconds and then have your, you know, what if I get your, your number? I'd love to have you on my show. And boom. You have someone right there. And it, it doesn't even matter if you have a show. I don't care if you're a singer. People yeah. don't know who you are. People are giving you compliments all the time. Even when we have our mask on. I like your earrings. I love your hair. I love your outfit. Oh, girl, thank you. Girl, I like your outfit, too. Give another compliment. And you're like, you know what? I'm coming out with a new song. I definitely think, you know, I would love feedback from people, especially ones I don't know. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you mind if I give you my link? People love it. They share it. And that's how you go. You got to build. So Absolutely. Listen, Logical Lynn said, love it. Jumper with a plan. I love it. I was like, yes, a jumper with a plan. Because at some point, you have to actually get up out of there. Like, yes. After you're planning after you know exactly what you need to do. The only thing that you need to do is take the next step. And I always say that after you've planned, the jumping is really not even a risk. It's like, a, okay, Ooh. a calculated risk. But you're taking it. You're, you're betting on yourself. And you can always win 100% of the time. It's not even a risk. Yes. I, I, and, so that, that is just the, the, you are, your lived experience, plus you being able to coach other people has really given you like such a detailed explanation and every single thing that you you share with us, which lets yes. us know that you you walk the walk, you I talk do. the talk, and you have the knowledge that you've gotten in your experience to really share with us. So I'm, I'm curious, you, you speak really, really from like, like it's so vivid, like the way that you, and even like, oh, let me remember to tell you. This. Like it comes, it comes because you clearly experience it, or you know somebody who has. So in your journey of transitioning and becoming an entrepreneur, what are some of the like 
pitfalls or mistakes that you yeah. made. And I'm not talking, I don't usually speak from a regret perspective, but we learn a lot of lessons from those mistakes that we made. So what would you say is one of those big ones for you? Yeah, uh, probably for me is getting outside of my head because, you know, like I said, being on Roku, I don't see my numbers. And on IG and other stuff, I see them, but I'm like, I don't have like 10,000 followers. No one likes me. And I go throw my pity party and I balloons included and cake. Like I throw myself a pity party. <laughs> I do, girl, I'm the worst. I am the worst. I'm the hardest on myself. And then, you know, I have to pull myself out and say, okay, stop. You got to stop it. There are people who are really watching you, enjoying you. A really good advice a friend gave me is he said, pay attention to who's paying attention to you. Not the people who are not, because we can't control them. I'm somebody's favorite and I'm somebody's, they, they don't know I even exist yet. So pay attention to who's paying attention to you because the more feedback you give to them, the more love they're gonna give back. So that's literally what I'm learning now going through the journey. Um, probably other pitfalls is learning to pivot quicker and find other areas that I, I like to do in my business. So for example, coming from San Diego um, and then coming to Delaware, completely two different types of cities. San Diego is like that. And then you can go up to LA, you can travel. Delaware is a retirement community. You come here if you want to have a job or two to retire. So doing that type of business, people are like, oh, easy, are you hungry? You know, it may take a while to get a sale. So going through that and knowing that it's not you, I had to understand that's the, the environment that I'm in. Do I want to stay in this environment or let's say, do I want to go do Philly? Because Philly is like that. I can go down to D.C. or New Jersey that are around here and get that pulse that I want. It's just knowing where you are and knowing how to be reactive to that so you don't you don't absorb it you're gonna have those bad days you're gonna have a day where my whole entire calendar blew out like everyone you know my daughter got sick family emergency i forgot can i just reschedule and i'm like okay like the whole day i throw myself a pity party because that's what i do pity, 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 pity. then i say okay how can we make today a win and um, I, this is where I definitely want to tell all my gems, you've heard me say it, but have a business partner, not someone necessarily that's in business with you, but someone who's an entrepreneur will call a girlfriend up, especially in San Diego. And I'll be like, girl, my day blew, my day blew out. What are you doing? She was like, ah, nothing. I'm like, come on, we're going we gonna to go to the mall. We're going to give out our, um, our business cards. I finally got some business cards. <laughs> And I would say, we're not leaving till we give out five and we get five back. And first she was like, oh, girl, she was like, Jewel. And I was like, well, you better make it happen because I'm hungry. And having her energy with me, we would go to the mall. And when people would say hi to her, I'm like, that's you. Go give it out. Get something in return. And we go and we would just, and again, we weren't vultures. I wasn't like bulldozing. They're still entrepreneurs in the mall. All those kiosks, they're entrepreneurs. So instead of ignoring them like some of them do, we do. Now I'm going up and talking to the guy that sells the jewelry and the oils. And they're saying, you know what? I was looking for someone like you. I'm having an event on Saturday. Yeah. I'm like, here we are. And we would get booked for other events. We would get, you know, now you're building on a, my day got blown out. So that's what I mean by taking advantage of those times. You go to the mall, go to your favorite spots. If you go to Starbucks every day and sit, instead of doing this at the computer, sit up and look who's around you and say, hey, I see you all the time. You can start off with, what are you drinking? That always is my, always my go-to. And I'm like, oh, how do you like it? Cool. And then say, hey, what are you working on? This is what I'm working on. Before you know it, besties, friends, but you got to know how to get in and how to get out so you're not, you know, imposing. You've already switched numbers, got business cards, can't wait to talk to you. You've been in Starbucks and you found three different people. But this is your normal routine. So yeah. I've done, and when I say I've done that, man, Starbucks was just like, hey, Jordan, I'm going to sit over here. They're like, oh, we know, girl. And I'm not a coffee drinker, but I would go get their tea. Sometimes I would get water. And I sit in the corner, pop open, and people be like, 
is this seat taken? Mwahahaha. I'm like, no, it's not. And I know. And I'm like, yeah, let's come sit over here. And then I'm like, again, what are you drinking? What are you doing? And before I know, I'm there, I have no idea who this person is because not every entrepreneur, you know, dresses up. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we should connect him. Yes, no, don't, so don't go take me out if I'm in my mode. I, someone asked me about green beans. I'm like, oh, what are you doing with green beans? What are you doing? Oh, by the way, yada, 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 yada. Here's my name. Here's your number. I'm not going to keep you. Can't wait to talk to you tomorrow. Boom. Listen, drop them gems, Je Jewel. Listen. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So you are clearly, you have made, I would say, it sounds like, if I were to do your strength assessment, I would say relationship building would definitely be like, yes. you would have at least two or three in the top five. Um, but when I listen to your story, one, you built your network from the ground up when you were back in, um, on the West Coast, right? Yes. You, you literally are like this relationship builder, like person, in person. Like you you do this. I can hear it. And then three, you and I met on social media. So you do it on virtual and you do it in person, which is lit. So one of the things that we connected on is uh, lately is the fact that we have our podcast. And hearing your story about how you developed your podcast, how you made connections and got on larger platforms, was actually it's actually where we are a lot of us are right now right we want to yeah. get on larger platforms we want to get more visibility we want to know who to reach out to and how to reach out to them so in okay. your journey like it, would you mind sharing a couple tips on like for people who want to leverage this experience like you have they now have some relationships but they're not all the way tapped in and now they want to start a podcast how can they do some of the things that you've done yeah, and I'm still, like I said, I'm still learning, still growing, but some of the things, connect yourself with people who are on the same journey. So you want to have that same energy. So finding someone like you who's on that same journey, you're like, no, I have this podcast. And I'm like, oh, we can share this, we can do that, because you're going to naturally co-market each other. You're on my platform. So financial gyms for jewel people are seeing you. I'm on your platform. So your audience is seeing me find people who are naturally moving. So may, it may not be your best friend. You're just like, girl, I just go on Facebook live just to say hi. Now that may be okay if they have a huge following, but you're, you have to now start thinking it needs to be a exchange of energy and exchange of information and exchange of platforms so when you're finding your guest on your show or you're finding someone you want to connect to make sure it's someone you one actually want to be connected with make sure you want to be connected with them and two they got to know that this is an exchange let's exchange so you're building each other up at the same time you never want it to be like this because someone started my hands to be like that because I've, I've been there I felt like that like I've been giving and giving and giving and I'm like you didn't even give me a shout out like I just want you to say hi to at JR Finance and I didn't get that so making sure people understand that plan I would say definitely is number one number two I would say find a platform that works best for you because like i said i started out on facebook and then facebook like they they blocked me they were like you just do i don't know if i was doing too good then they started asking for money so i went to youtube okay. and then i was like okay let me do youtube in the middle of all that um i shot my shop to the the roku exec and that's literally how i ended up on roku i wasn't necessarily looking for it i didn't even know how to get on it i just like some of you guys, when you see someone you want to talk to, I was telling a friend this the other day, if you see someone to talk to, they're human just like you. Reach out to them and say hi. Be polite, be professional, but get your ask in there. And that's Go back and look at who he is. And I was like, oh, he's starting a network. Let me go send him a little something else. He liked it, and that's where I am. So don't be afraid to shoot your shot. You want to connect with someone. Just say, okay. Find someone else that's going to say yes, because there are over a billion people on the world, and all of them haven't told Jewel no. <laughs> and there's a lot of yeses out there. So I know for me, 
it's hard to, you see that no, and it feels like it's huge. It feels like the whole world doesn't like me. No, it's just that one person who maybe doesn't understand what you're doing. You got all these other people out there that are just like, oh, I like you. I've been waiting for someone to come and do what it is that you do. Keep searching. They'll come, they'll find you and market yourself. Um, another one of the things that I would definitely say, on top of being a planner, but have some type of schedule. Like, I love your show, Wisdom Wednesday, so they know when to find you. It is not Wisdom Thursdays. It is not Wisdom Mondays. It is Wisdom Wednesdays. Have something so people know where to find you, so they're not like, I really like this show, but I don't even know when it airs. Maybe Saturday it was Saturday last time. It was Tuesday last week. Have some consistency and that will, that will definitely get you that momentum that you're looking for. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm looking at the comments because you got, you got the folks, you got the crowd going wild, Jules. So the first one was um, through from Hookmaster Jazz was saying, yes, network across and not always up. So definitely re they're receiving your gems here. And then um, Logical Lynn said, um, I'm going to try to read it. So when it, when it comes to the larger text, it's always better to put it in the question so that we, so I can see it all. But listen here, I will not let this thing fail me now. So she said, I keep I keep uh, saying I wish I had more like-minded people in my circle, but I'm not reaching out, um, and I have to get better with that. So you're definitely reaching out to, like, I have, I'm actually going to have to replay this, um, this, this live, take some notes, because there are some things that I have just kind of fallen off on because I'm full-time school, and I'm like, okay, so there's a little bit less networking. I actually haven't even been scheduling new podcasts because I have three a day, three every Saturday, and I'm just like... You're giving me so much more stuff. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I need to write that down and fit it in as soon as I can. Do not lose momentum. So thank you so much oh, for adding so much value, Jewel. You literally set us up for success today. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm just happy to share my journey and share, and share my ups, my downs, my highs, my lows, my challenging moments, because I'm right there with the vast majority of people, I'm still go through the same challenges that they do. So thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing me to share that. Absolutely. Now, before I let you go, you have to let us know how can we find you? How can we stay connected? Whether we want to work with you or just continue following your journey. Yes, you can. You can be a guest on my show if you like that. If you just want to follow me on IG, it's at JR Finance. Um, my show, Financial Gems with Jewel. If you're on Roku, do a search for the channel called Viz D. That'll pop up and then you'll be able to find my show. If you don't have Roku, no problem. You can go to another network that's called PSTV, which stands for Positive TV. Do a search for Financial Gems with Jewel. I'll pop up there. And then, of course, on YouTube, Financial Gems with Jewel. And you can watch all of my shows that way. So three different ways to find and watch me and connect with me, ask me questions, come and be a guest. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, I love meeting new people. And I love just sharing your stories because I'm always picking up new ideas as well. So I don't know it all. There's some stuff. And I'm like, oh, that was a good one. So definitely can learn from you all too. Nice. And you are definitely a good steward of the lessons that you've learned from other people as well as yourself. So I just thank you for sharing your stories, sharing stories that, that you've come across along the way and just really make lighting us up on this Wisdom Wednesday. I can't thank you enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Well, you guys have a wonderful day. Listen, we got the fire emojis in the chat. Literally, let, she lit us up, right? Thank you guys so much for joining. Thank you. Yes, th thank you for joining, Lynn, um, and, and Rosh Roshad, and Hookmaster Jazz, and everyone else in the chat that you have participated in this conversation. We've enjoyed you. So until next time, peace out, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.